we have a trade. Well, we have a few trades. First one, the big one, Giancarlo Stanton, Anthony Rendon, Jose Iglesias, and Will Middlebrooks go to the Miami Marlins for Giancarlo Stanton and Casey McGee, who will be a bench player for us. A bit of a throw-in, but I think a nice piece off the bench. And we're also going to pick up Cole Hamels for three lesser-known prospects, Pat Light, Rodrigo Escalona, and Sean Coyle. Coyle was actually in the Futures game, so some of you might have heard of him. Um, and then Pat Light, the Phillies really wanted. And the big thing there is we're going to take on the rest of his four-year $90 million contract which uh, obviously is a pretty big contract for a team to take on in a trade. We also pick up Glenn Perkins, and we're going to get D. Gordon for John Lackey. So I'll explain those last couple moves. The first two are pretty obvious why we would make them. The other one, uh, Carlos Ruiz, and we threw in a couple prospects for Glenn Perkins. Um, Perkins will just help shore up our bullpen a little bit. And then we pick up D. Gordon because Lackey was pretty much our sixth starter at this point after we got Hamels. Didn't really need him, was going to use him in the bullpen, but found out that we could get a guy in D. Gordon who's a really good pinch runner off the bench, plus a good four, you know fifth infielder. Um, I think that made a lot of sense. Napoli's going to be out for a month or two, and or one to two months, and Dustin Midori was our only all-star representative. So I know that was a lot of stuff in the first couple of, uh, or really the first minute or so of this video, but... Feel free to uh, let me know what you guys thought of those trades in the comment section below. And today we're going to be taking on the Seattle Mariners. J.A. Happ will be on the mound. But, and ironically enough, he actually pitched against the Red Sox last night with the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. But So, um, yeah, we do have a lot of player movement and uh, sort of a, a big shift with our roster. So what I did was this lineup you're going to see today is pretty much a lineup you can expect us to run for a while. Um, pretty much our main lineup. You'll see it in a little bit. But here is the Mariners lineup. You can see it there. And Cole Hamels will be... Making his third or fourth start with the Red Sox, I simulated probably three weeks or so after those deals. I made those basically right after the last game I showed you guys, then simulated three or four weeks ahead, past the All-Star break, and uh, into this game against the Seattle Mariners. So we strike out Cano there, and this is what our lineup's going to look like. So you can take a quick look at it. The only things I would say are going to change is that bottom of three with the three young guys. Betts is not going to usually be in there, but we called him up after Napoli got hurt, because Ciccini can go over and play first base for Napoli, and we move Betts over to third base. Um, where he would have, uh, or where Ciccini was basically replacing Middlebrooks and Rendon. And you saw Swe or Swihart, Swihart, I think it's Swihart, um, at the catcher spot. He usually would platoon with Christian Vasquez, and Vasquez would get starts against lefties like Hap, but Vasquez is hurt, so we're going to have to go with Swihart against both. And we have, um, I believe, Ryan Lavardway up as our backup catcher for now. So here we get two guys on against Jay Hap to start things out, and Bogarts to deep left field. That's going to hit high off the monster. One run is in. Victorino will hold at third, but it's an RBI double for Xander Bogarts. And it's a good way to start at the game. So the next batter, the cleanup hitter, is David Ortiz. And he goes down swinging on that slider. So that will make it one away now. And that will bring up Giancarlo Stanton in the uh, first time we've gotten to use him in a Red Sox uniform. And he hits this one to deep center field. Reimer Liriano going back. He is going to make this catch on about the warning track. But the runners will tag. Victorino comes home and scores. Bogarts gets into third easily. And Giancarlo Stanton drives in a run on the sack. Clyde next batter is Michael Kadire. He grounds this one to the shortstop. Five. Bloomquist fires to first, and that will retire the side. Kadire is thrown out. So, Hap actually works around allowing the first three base runners to, uh, or the first three batters to get on base and only allows two runs. Into the next inning here, Corey Hart up, and he actually swings and misses on that curveball, but Blake Sweetheart cannot control it. So, Hart actually gets on to first there despite the strikeout. Still no one out now for the next batter will be Justin Smoke, who inside outs this one to right field, falling fast, and Victorino can't get there. And now both runners will be safe, so it's going to be first and second now with no one away. For the next batter, it will be Dustin Ackley, the 1-1 count from Hamels. And Ackley, it's this one to deep right field, Giancarlo going back, but it's going to be over his head. It will one-hop up off the wall, played by Giancarlo on the hop. He'll get it in as quickly as he can, but Ackley already on his way to third, and it's a 2-RBI triple for Dustin Ackley as he ties this game. Next batter is Mike Zanino, the 0-2 count. And Zanino hits that curveball to the second baseman. Hamels was looking for a strikeout there to try and prevent the run from coming home. Got ahead of Zanino 0-2, but Zanino was able to ground that one and drive in another run. So it's 3-2 now. Next batter is Michael Saunders. A 10-pitch A-B here, but finally Hamels is able to get Saunders on the up-and-in fastball that he takes looking. Saunders fouled off five or six pitches there and really fought tough. So, onto the top of the third, Reimer Liriano here to lead it off. He's going to hit this one back up the middle for a base hit, and the and the Mariners are uh, having another rally here. Cole Hamill's in some more trouble. He has not got off to a great start this game. Next batter is Billy Bloomquist, 0-2 count, and that's, this time, Hamill's executes on 0-2 and gets the curveball to uh, get down in the dirt, and Bloomquist swings and misses his own. Next batter is Robinson Cano. Runner takes off. This ball hit to center field. And Shane Victorino is going to get there. Oh, no, he actually gets behind it a little bit. 
And that's what I, it's really hard for me to line up the things so like you get a little running start when you make the catch. And it was probably stupid of me to even try to do it there, but still um, a little bit frustrating. Corey Hart up next, and you can see uh, that is Kadir in left playing Car Corey Hart really, really deep. I don't know why, but that's going to actually allow Liriano to come around and score. You don't see a lot of runners score and base hits in the left field like that because Fenway, uh, the green monster, is, show, is so shallow. But for some reason, Kadir had Hart played really, really deep. So I'm not really too sure why, but it cost us another run, so it's 4-2 to two now. Golhai almost struggling a little bit, but you can't really say it's all his fault. He's only given up two earned runs despite the four regular runs. And Dustin Bedoya did not like that slider call for strike three. And you'll see the replay. Check out Bedoya's face. I thought this was comedy at its finest. You can see he is not liking that call. The high strike, not one called a lot on breaking balls by MLB umpires, but obviously it's a video game, so it's a little bit different. And Ortiz goes down later in the inning for the second time today. So he is uh, struggling a little bit. He gets back in as a full-time DH after Middlebrooks was traded. So hopefully it will uh, strengthen our lineup a little bit. But here again, a drop third strike by Sweetheart. That one somehow bounced all the way down the first baseline. That was strike three, but Ackley gets on. So now it's two into account two. Mike Zanino, the next batter, and Zanino goes down swinging on that beautiful cutter from Cole Hamels. And Hamels has a very similar pitch repertoire to... Um, to John Lester, so it's interesting to see those two work. And Giancarlo Stanton to deep left field, way back and gone. A solo home run. What a shot by Giancarlo Stanton. You'll get to see it on the replay, but this one eclipsed all of Fenway Park. It got completely out of there. What a show right there. That was impressive, and you'll see on the replay. Also, what do you guys think of a number for Giancarlo Stanton? I think I'm going to switch it to 48 because he wore that in AAA, I believe, or maybe it was double A. I forget which one is the Jacksonville Suns. I think it's the AAA team for the Marlins. And I looked up some pictures of him online. And he was wearing 48 in AAA. So I think I'm going to do that. But later in the inning, Kadir, two left center field. That's going to get down. Liriano playing it off the wall. Throwing to second in time. And Kadir is gunned out. So a beautiful play right there from Reimer Liriano. The uh, real life AAA member of the San Diego Padres. But top of the fifth now. Robinson Cano up. And Cano goes down swinging again. His third strikeout of the day. So Cano having a rough go of things here at the plate. 80 pitches so far for Hamels. He's settled in nicely. Next batter, or uh, actually it's in now the sixth inning, and this is Kyle Seager. He swings and misses on the fastball. So Hamels, another strikeout. That is his eighth of the day. But we're going to head to the bottom of the sixth. First pitch of the AB to Giancarlo Stanton. Already with one homer today. And how about you make it to Stanton to deep left field again and using the monster effectively. Now I actually... Uh, since Giancarlo Stan's been rumored to go to the Red Sox, or, you know, it's always sort of a lot of Red Sox fans' dream scenarios for Stan to end up on the Red Sox. I've actually thought about it, and I wouldn't be surprised if Stanton struggled to hit home runs at Fenway Park just because he does pull the ball so much on his homers, and he doesn't get a lot of lift on them, though. He hits a lot of line drive home runs, and I imagine he would just hit ball a lot of, lot of line drives, screaming line drives at that off the green monster, but... Here he is able to lift a couple pitches, and that is his second home run of the ball game. And his third RBI, he's contributed his three of the four runs to the Red Sox. We've come back on the back of two Giancarlo Stanton home runs and tied the game at four heading into the seventh inning. Ruby De La Rosa will come on for Hamels, who is at about 90. Actually, he was over 100 pitches after the sixth inning. So we're going to turn it over to De La Rosa. Here one out already in the inning. 3-2 count to Liriano, and Liriano just takes that fastball looking. Didn't even try to argue it. He knew it was strike three. It just froze him. Must have been looking for the slider or the changeup. Tyler Clippard will come on now for the Seattle Mariners. And yes, this is a freeze frame. I didn't, uh, I accidentally like clicked X too fast after uh, Clippard was coming in. But Cicchini will get on base here with a base hit into left field. So a nice piece of hitting for uh, Garen Cicchini going the other way with it. Now Blake Sweetheart up next. One out in the inning. And there goes Cicchini to second. He dives in safely. But it looks like he comes up in a little bit of pain, and he is having trouble getting to his feet. Looks like his shin bone is a little damaged, and he is in a lot of pain right now. Looks like could be a fracture or a break, some sort of serious injury. So we're going to bring on D. Gordon here to pinch run. And if you got D. Gordon on second with one out, you should probably try and steal third. So the next pitch, Clippard with his long sort of stretch motion to the plate. That ball's taken by Swihart, or Sweetheart. I got to figure it out. And Gordon gets into third, so we got a runner on third with one out. Sweetheart, a chance to drive him in. Couple pitches later to 2 2 count to Sweetheart. And this ball is in the dirt. It's going to get away from the catcher. Gordon hesitates. He's now coming home. The throw is in time. And Gordon is gunned out at the plate. So two away for Clip or for uh, Sweetheart. Next pitch to deep left center field. Left fielder over to play it. That's Ackley. He'll make the play. So that would have gotten Gordon home. But instead, nothing comes of that little, uh, little rally that the Red Sox had going. So we're going to bring in Koji Uehara for the eighth inning. 
He's been demoted to the setup man with the addition of Glenn Perkins, only because Uahara's ratings are so far down, I really don't trust the simulation to handle him. Or the simulation, like the CPU or whatever, to handle him when I'm simulating games as the closer. So I'd rather Perkins be in that and turn Koji into super setup man. So he gets a 1 2 3 8. Clippert, on the other hand, gets through the at least beginning of the ninth, but now a 3 0 count to Xander Bogarts with two away. And Bogarts actually in a work of four pitch walk, so that's going to bring up the maybe the greatest clutch hitter in Red Sox history, David Ortiz, with an 0 1 count. The go ahead run on first base with two away in the bottom of the eighth inning. Tie game. Clippert comes to the set. He kicks and deals, and this ball's hit to deep right field. Right fielder going back. It's up and it's gone. David Ortiz, a two run home run. A line drive that just gets over the short porch there and right well I wouldn't call it a short porch it's about 380 feet there to dead right field but it is certainly a uh, short fence there and Ortiz used it to his advantage as that one did not get very high off the ground as you'll see on the replay but it just de does get into the right field bleacher seats there right over the wall for a two run home run now that's going to give us a six to four lead Glenn Perkins will come on for the ninth inning he has not had a great season but 28 saves for the Twins, or at least some of them with the Twins, some of them with the Red Sox. He's on now with two men on. Liriano goes down swinging on that slider. That's going to wrap up the ball game. A come from behind, 6-4 to four victory for the Boston Red Sox. And that's a big win right there, showing off a lot of the new guys. Giancarlo had a good day. I thought Hamels pitched well despite running into a couple bad innings there. And, of course, Perkins getting the save and Gordon getting a steal himself. So seeing a lot of new faces here get the job done. That's going to do it for me. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoy. Does them out. Peace.